Hello, welcome to lesson 2. In this lesson, we are going to look at the images formed by a concave lens. Then we shall also compare lenses with prisms. We shall look at the lenses and the sign convention. And then we shall look at the thin lens formula. And lastly, power of a lens. Let us begin by looking at the images formed by a concave lens. So images formed by a concave lens are, are always the same no matter where you place the object. These images are always erect, they are always diminished, and they are always virtual. Let's look at the ray diagram. So when we place the object anywhere, a ray power to the principal axis is refracted and appears to be coming from the principal focus, and the ray passing through the center, the optical center, goes undeviated, and therefore the image is going to be formed at this point between F and C. And that image is going to be uh, real, sorry, virtual, erect, and uh, diminished. Let's also look at the uses of the uses of concave lens. Let's look at the uses of the concave lens. One, uh, uh, concave lenses are used in spectacles, in spectacles for short-sighted people, and then also they are used in Galilean telescopes. A Galilean telescope, this is a type of telescope. We shall look at telescopes when we are discussing the optical instruments. Let's look at the lenses in comparison with the prisms. So we are going to, to say that these lenses are like small prisms, small angled prisms joined together. They're like small angled prisms. They can be compared to small angled prisms joined together. Lenses can be compared to small angled prisms joined together. So this is how they will be looking like. So when we get these small angled prisms and add them together, then we form the lenses. So that's how we can compare lenses with prisms. That means that the deviation uh, for a small angled prism, remember the deviation we are looking at prism was for small angled prism, D is equal to N minus 1 into brackets A. So that deviation uh, is the same deviation that this lens can undergo. So you are saying that when uh, all rays, all parallel rays incident on the lens at a single point suffer a similar small deviation D, which is equal to N minus 1 times A, produced by a prism of small angle A regarded to have replaced the lens. So that means that if you add the prism, then the small, small prism added together forms the lens. So the deviation of that thin lens will be given as the deviation of a small angle prism. Uh, let us look at the lenses and the sign conversion. What is a sign conversion in this case? A sign conversion is a rule for assigning, uh, for assigning either positive or negative signs to the focal length, to the radius of, uh, radius of curvature, uh, to the image and object distances. So that rule for assigning of signs to the focal length, the radius of curvature, the object distance, the image distance, is what we call the sign convention. So we are going to look at these rules. There are the rules which have been adopted. Uh, these rules are known world over. And these rules include one that when we have uh, uh, the distances of real object, the distances of real objects and real images are always positive. That is, U and V for real objects and real images are positive. Then also, the distances of virtual objects and virtual images and negative. That means that U and V for virtual objects and virtual images are negative. They are negative. Then you also need to note that uh, the focal length for the convex lens is positive and the one for the concave lens is negative. Let's look at the thin lens formula. So when you're looking at the thin lens formula, we are going to consider these two diagrams. 
one. Let's first look at this first figure. So we shall have a, a parallel ray, a ray parallel to the principal axis is going to be refracted through the principal focus and it's undergoing a deviation D. This is a small deviation D. So we are assuming that this distance H is a small distance and so the, the deviation is going to be a small angle. So because if you look at this, we are trying to form a prism here, a prism and you know when you have a prism, the deviation to undergoes is always that deviation d. And is now, since it is a small angled prism, it means that you are going to consider a small deviation. And also, we shall also look at this other second figure, where we are going to be having a ray from a point object O being refracted to form the image, the point image I, to form a point image I. And this, the, this ray undergoes a deviation. Remember, this ray was moving that direction. So it is going to go undergo a deviation. It's going to undergo a deviation D. And this deviation and this deviation are similar because it is the same lens. So they're going to have similar deviation D. And this angle is alpha and this angle is beta. And the distance from O to the optical center is U and the distance from I to the optical center is V. Now let us first consider the figure one. For, from figure one, we can see that D is approximately equal to tan of D because there are small angles, small angles measured in radians, which is equal to the opposite of the adjacent, because we know that tan is opposite of adjacent. So it's going to be H over F. That is the first equation. Then from the second figure also, we can see that alpha is approximately equal to tan alpha because alpha is a small angle, small angle measured in radian, and beta is also a small angle measured in radians. So alpha is approximately equal to tan of alpha, which is equal to opposite H over adjacent U. And also beta is equal to, and also beta is equal to, or approximately equal to tan of beta, which is opposite, which is H over adjacent, which is U. So which is V. And so we shall have this. Now, uh, from, from the geometry of the figure, from the geometry of this figure, two in opposite, two, op two interior angles is equal to one opposite exterior angle. So we have alpha plus beta is equal to D. Alpha plus beta is equal to D. Uh, that's how we get it. So D is equal to alpha plus beta. But remember, we said alpha is H over U, and then beta is H over V. So when we add the two, we shall get D as H over U plus H over V. That is our second equation. That's our second equation. Now when we combine 1 and 2, we shall have, when we equate that is 1 and 2, because we have seen that D is H over F, and also D is equal to H over U plus H over V, which implies that H over F is equal to H over U plus H over V. And then when we divide through by H, we shall have 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. So that's what we shall be having. And this is the, the general lens equation. That's the general lens equation. That's the general lens equation. Now, this equation still works for a diverging. It can also work for a diverging lens. It's the same equation used for a diverging lens. As long as you keep the sign conventions, yeah, the sign convention must be maintained when you're using the same formula for a diverging lens, you must consider the sign conversion. You must consider the sign conversion. So we are saying that if the sign conversion is used for U, V, and F, the equations hold both for converging lens and then the diverging lens. Then uh, there's also another note here that we need to make. There's an, also another note we need to make here that the same results above can be derived uh, with the aid of concave lens having light 
rays uh, light ray paths as shown aside so we can in other words we can derive this same formula using the concave lens let's see how that will be so if you have that and this we can come up with the same equations you can come up with the same equation because you can still see the d is going to be h over f and here also you can see alpha plus beta is equal to alpha plus uh, not, not really that alpha plus beta but when you look at this uh, in this case if this is alpha and this is alpha this is beta angle made at the, ob at the object and at the image so when we observe this this is d eh? this is d so it implies that this is also d because they are vertically opposite they are vertically opposite so it means that d plus alpha is equal to b which implies that d is equal to alpha so d is going to be beta minus alpha d is going to be beta minus alpha and because we are considering sine conversions still when we replace the same way we did the other case we shall have the the positive will disappear they will cancel out they will cancel out because we are considering that the f is negative the f is negative and because of that we shall if you consider the sign conversion we shall come up with the same equation maybe you'll try that out and but will always give you the same equation as long as you consider the sign conversions that you and uh, because you can see this one is positive v, u is positive v is negative and f and the f for this one is negative so if you consider that you come up with the same equation even though you we are seeing that d is equal to b minus alpha yet here we had d as alpha plus beta but here we're going to have d as beta minus alpha but still you'll come up because of the sign conversion it will come up with the same thing let's look at the power of a lens let's look at the power of a lens so the power of the lens is the reciprocal of the focal length in meters the reciprocal of the focal length in meters it is measured in a unit called diopters and what is a diopter a diopter is the power of the lens of focal length one meter uh, so we are saying power of the lens power of the lens is equal to one over the focal length but that focal length the reciprocal of the focal length which is one over focal length but that focal length must be in meters that focal length must be measured in meters it must be measured in meters and we are saying this unit diopter is the SI unit for the power of the lens and it and it's defined as uh, the power of a lens of focal length one meter let's also look at the power of combination of two lenses in contact when you have two when we, we get two lenses and when they're in contact the power of the lens is got by summing the individual powers of each of the lenses so we shall have p1 plus p2 so the total power is given by the power of the first lens plus the power of the second lens and we just sum the two powers and we get the power of the combination p let's make a note here let's make a note here that the power of a converging lens is positive while that of a diverging lens is negative so the one for a, a converging lens is positive and the one for a diverging lens is negative let's look at some examples one the power sorry calculate the power of a converging lens of focal length 25 centimeters remember that the power when you're substituting we must substitute the focal length in in meters not in centimeters so we shall change this to meters by multiplying by 10 to the power negative 2 and using the formula power is equal to 1 over f in meters so we shall have the power is going to be 1 over 25 times 10 power negative 2 that is in meters and that will be if we divide that we shall get four diopters let us also look at number two culture the power 
of a diverging lens of focal length 25, sorry, of focal length 20 centimeters. Remember, this is a diverging lens, so the focal length is negative. The focal length is negative, and is negative 20 centimeters, which is the same as negative of 20 times 10 power negative 2. Use the same formula, like for this, shall have the power, it's going to be 1 over negative 20 times 10 power negative 2 in meters, which will give us negative 5 diopters. I think the spelling here is supposed to be M-E-T-R-E-S. That is the British English. Okay, let's look at number three. Two converging lenses of focal length 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters are placed in contact. Find the power of the combination. So here we are going to consider the first lens. First, get the power of the first lens. So for the first lens, we are going to use the formula power. P1 is going to be 1 over F in meters which is going to be, but we know that the F is, uh, we have to change it in meters, which is going to be 0 0.1 meter, because we get this 10 and divide by 100, we'll get 10 times, 10 times 10 to the power negative 2, which will give us 0 0.1. So P1 is going to be 1 over F in meters, it's going to be 1 over 0 0.1, which is 10 diopters, 10 D. The diopters can be abbreviated as capital D. Then also for the second lens, uh, F is equal to 20 centimeters, which is the same as 0 0.2 meters, which is the same as 0 0.2 meters. And if we want to get P2, we shall have P2 as 1 over F in meters, which is 1 over 0 0.2, which will give us 5 diopters or 5D. Then the power of the combination we shall get by adding the two. P1 plus P2, which will give us 10 plus 5, which will give us 15 diopters. Let's last look at this question 4. A converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters is placed in contact with a diverging lens of focal length 25 centimeters. Find the power of the combination. So we have a diverging lens and then a, a converging lens. So let us look at the two. First of all, the power of the first, that is power for the first lens, it is a converging lens. So F is positive, which is positive 10 centimeters, which is the same as 0 0.1 meters. So the power is going to be 1 over F in meters, which is 1 over 0 0.1 meters, which will give us uh, 10 diopters. Then for the second lens, F is negative 25, which is the same as negative 0 0.25 meters. Is negative 25 centimeters, which is the same as negative 0 0.25 meters, and therefore the power shall be got by getting 1 over the focal length in meters, and that will give us 1 over negative 0 0.25 meters, which will give us a that is going to give us negative 4 diopters. Now we shall get the combination, the power of the combination is going to be P1 plus P2. P1 plus P2, which will give us 10 plus negative 4, which is the same as 10 minus 4, which will give us 6 diopters. Yeah, thank you for your attention. We meet in the next lesson.